You're listening to the Super League Pod. Coming up on episode 91 of your favourite Rugby League podcast, we've got all your feedback and shout-outs, news from around the world of Rugby League. We'll be giving my poll a right good looking at. We'll have all your usual reviews and previews from the world of Super League, and we'll have a nice healthy slice of Super League Pod recommends. All that and more on your podcast with your views, the Super League Pod. Welcome to uh, episode 91 of the Super League Pod. As uh, as always, I'm Tom, and I'm joined by uh, by Mark in the podcast studio. How's it going, Mark? Good, yeah. I, uh, I, I worked out that episode 100, Yes. when that falls, is um, the day after I'm back off a stag do. Fantastic. That <laughs> is that tremendous. So uh, I can't imagine that I'll be up to much that week. Well, I think we get you to do the intro that way. Like, yeah. <laughs> episode 100. <laughs> Bright slap, but you may not even make it back. You hear all these horror stories about. Well, it's making it there that the problem's been with Bratislava, hasn't it? Them lads that got kicked off in Berlin last week for of course getting they're... too pissed up on a Ryanair flight. Well, as long as nobody goes on the stag do that's shagged the same girl, then you're alright, aren't you? Because that was what they were kicking off about. Oh, was it? The two lads, yeah, they'd... one of them had banged the girl and got back together with her, and then in the interceding time, this other geezer had been in there as well. Oh. And, uh, and it just all kicked off over Sounds this... Sounds like a right Towie episode. Over this last year, and there was all sorts of talk about, oh, stab you with a fork, and it just seemed like a very posh... The thing is, I'm sure there's lots of, like, rough people from Southampton, but they all sound quite posh. Yeah, yeah. So, it did come across a bit pissed, because there's a video of it on uh, on the Daily Mail website, and uh, it does come across a little bit like, you know, pistols at dawn and slapping people with their gauntlets and things. Oh, right. Obviously, enough to get them kicked off a plane, so as long as you yeah. avoid that, you'd probably be all right, mate. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm confident that we'll avoid that. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty, uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. You've for that, vetted everyone's previous sexual history. Well, that's well. Uh, to be honest, it's like my best mates from school. <laughs> pretty much it took a lot of doing. Yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty short yeah. conversation. One, I know about it all, and two, there isn't much to know. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. Okay, so uh, who's been? <laughs> let's, let's get on with things before I inadvertently insult any one of your friends. Um, who's been getting in touch with us this week, Mark? Well, tons of people. This week's going to be heavy on the feedback and news sections, really, which I like. Uh, um, like people's feedback. We've got lots of stuff to get into. We're going to start with Alan Walker, who tends to be one of the quickest to get in touch each week, so he tends to find his way at the top of the rundown. He does. Uh, he said, not blowing smoke up your backsides, Tom and Mark, but each SL pod is better than the last. Real danger of knocking Twill off its top spot, especially as they got a reap pair of clowns doing an Aussie pensioner in ESL report to replace the mighty Glenn. Twill in decline, question mark. No. I'm not going to bite the hand that feeds our our friends. <laughs> I think it's going to decline if they're relying on us to inject to say, the show. Yeah, this is, um, yeah. yeah we, For people who aren't aware, but a few of you have picked up on it, um, we are doing a little segment at the moment for This Week in League, which yes. is the Aussie podcast that got us to believe if those two daft pricks can do a podcast, us two daft pricks can do a podcast. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do a little review on the Super League, obviously. Yeah. listeners to this will catch it if they want to hear their extended reviews on the NRL rather than to yeah. listen to our That's it. quick review like to of, think of like what all the players have done in the uh, in the Super League yeah we? exactly you know we're uh, we're all stable mates and uh, we're all working yeah. in the same field aren't we so uh, yeah. it's nice to be held in the same esteem as someone who's been established as long as the lads at this week in league and have kind of achieved what they have in terms of growing their podcast and, and being oh, relatively that. independent they kind of tick a lot of our boxes don't they so you know I'd, I'd take a joint first part. I'd take a joint first. It's not about it's not about <laughs> defeating them. That's okay. No. It's brothers in arms. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, but, but we appreciate the sentiment, Alan. So that's uh, you know that's very kind. Yeah, and thanks to the other people who got in touch about that who maybe haven't made the uh, rundown. Rich Langley got in touch with an email. Um, one of those ones that just teases me in. Yeah, he yeah. said uh, stats query for Mark to look at. Given that, given the stat that Frank the Tank has only made twenty odd tackles in three games this season, it's actually fifteen in three games. Looking back at the two thousand and fifteen season, yeah, come on, Rich, pay attention. No, no, I didn't know the full numbers, did I last week? But I checked. I thought you went. Yeah, no, it's on the show. You jumped in and said um, it was twenty and minus five. He said, looking back at twenty fifteen, what would a team full of tackle shirkers look like? <laughs> 
uh, that is who made the starting 13 of players with the least tackles with some kind of minimum games play being applied. So, yeah. I've gone with minimum 10 games yeah. in the main in the Super League regular season. Right. So the first 23 games. Mm-hmm. Fewest tackle per game by position. And by position, I mean that player's most commonly played position in the season. Okay. So a few of them are in a position you might not expect them to be, but... That's actually where they played most this season. Last season, Last yeah. season. Yeah, so yeah. fullback is Reese Hambry. He made 3.4 tackles per game. He actually was quite low on tackle success as well, but not at the bottom, but, but quite low. Yeah. Uh, on the wings were Matty Russell with 2.5 tackles per game and Jodie Broughton with 2.7 tackles per game. Uh, in the centres was two Hull players, Kirk Keeman 7.6 and Fatuli Talanoa 8.4, right. um, which actually is quite a high number for Fatuli Talanoa, given that he played a, a third of the season on the wing, Yeah, um, and the wingers actually listen from those numbers make the least tackles of any players, which isn't surprising. No. Um, so, in those positions, not too much criticism for those players, but they were the lowest the lowest out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the half-backs, you had a standoff with Kevin Brown, 12.5 tackles per game, which was the lowest by a little bit, but not by loads. Yeah. It's about average, but obviously the least. In the, in the scrum-half position, this was a lot lower than most other players in that position, probably half the next one up. Okay. It was Luke Walsh of St. Helens with 5.7 tackles per game. Right. Uh, moving into the pack, where you'd expect the tackle numbers to be quite a lot higher even though these are the ones that shirk the work the most Anthony Mullally with 13.2 tackles per game and Iafeta Pagliacina with 13.6 tackles per game qualifying point on these is game time yeah I was going to say these are both interchange forwards aren't they well that's what you're going to get with these anyway most props are rotated so I think it's not unfair to include props that are mostly rotated Um, the hooker yeah I was surprised to see that Rob Rowe played as much as that Um, but the thing is, it's Rob Burrow with 4.2 tackles per game. Now, that's really low, and it would make him the lowest halfback as well. Right. What you got to remember with Rob Burrow is he doesn't defend in the middle like any other hooker, so it's a bit of a yeah. cheat that you put him in. They do get him out of the way, don't but, they? But to be honest, that's a really like ridiculously low number for any player who oh, before, doesn't line up on the wing, which he doesn't. I don't like to say this in Rob Burrow's defence because he's, he's one of the biggest hearts in rugby league, but he is only little, and it is sensible to keep him out of the road, isn't it? you got to do your work. Got to do your work. He does a bit of work. He does do a bit of Didn't work. Didn't on the team he played for, I suppose. No. In the second row, we had Zeb Taya and Sam Arsar. <laughs> Sam Arsar makes another team of not such good performance. He, his performances in 2015 must mean that winners have got great value because they must have gotten him on, on a low deal, you got given how so. shitty he was last year in every, money, by every metric we can possibly measure. If you've moneyballed him in any way, he's on about a five or a game, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> And Josh Jones was the least forward with 22.1 tackles per game. So there you go, they were the shirkers last right, year. Fair but enough. none of those forwards, even even little Rob Burrow looked quite good with his 4.2 tackle per game compared to Frank nicknamed the tank for his size and yeah, but presence. Do you think, though, with Who Frank? only got... Well, where does the tank come from? It comes from your defence budget, not your attack budget. No, he's, 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 he's a running, he's a anyway, running forward. Five think, tackles per game. Do you think people are avoiding it? I can't see why. I don't know, he doesn't seem like he'd be... I don't know. Put it this way, you want him tackling you because you want the next play yeah. to run around him in the in the marker position. Mm. But, anyway. There you go. Okay, but well, that's an interesting one. Thank you, Rich, as well. Yep. Okay. Um, no helmets required, Gavin Willis. He said, uh, regarding MLS on Channel 5, yes, they had shootouts, which were way better than penalties. And also... Uh, I had a thing called a video recorder. We uh, questioned why he sat up so late to watch MLS highlights, didn't we? I don't like right. it. I was going to say, there is there is a kind of a bit where I say, well, he probably had a tape we cut, and then we carried on. So I had legislated for the fact that he might have had a VHS machine I knocking like around think, in the late 90s. I just like to think he'd sit there in the middle of the night all... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, dealing with his, the woes of the day while I'm getting got, over it with an MLS shootout. <laughs> I think he's got more than enough on the stoke until half past four in the morning watching, well, watching Major League Soccer. Whilst he's scrapping through like pamphlets about the uh, the American All-Stars tour to Australia. Precisely, so. precisely. Um, okay, Colin Render, he also got in touch on this. He said the um, the MLS breakaway shootouts were, were used to try and make it more exciting than penalty kicks. It's just farcical. I mean, yeah. I had a look at some on YouTube, and it is, it is exactly what you say. They yeah, just run with the ball, and it just, half the time they just run out of ideas. By the time you get to the eighteen yard, what's the what do I do here now? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's, it, yeah, 
Is that like with the hockey stick where you can do all your little moves? No, and you can sort of fake and juke. Yeah, it. yeah. It becomes more about a speedy reaction. It's just, yeah, not a great, not a great idea. Because the keeper can come right out on top of you once you get the ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Right now, oh we, now we have we, quite a few about the uh, the music. See if I can drop any more. Uh, the music <laughs> drop any more little little baits, little bit of baits in there. Yeah. Last week, so uh, Paul Michael Craig got in touch first. He's pointed out that crowded house were two two thirds Australian, which is, is a fair point. But you always, I always see him as Neil Finn, really mm. <laughs> Neil Finn and a couple of other blokes. And yeah. then when his brother was like obviously useless on his own, he brought him in right. to say, "Go on, Tim. We can give you a music career. Come on, come on, Tim Finn." Um, but yeah, d- did you ever see the thing that I always? Let's just kind of qualify before we get in a crowded house. Don't dream it's over. The weather with you. That's about it. Fall at your feet. Fall at your feet. Is that crowded house? Yeah. Private universe. Every week I upset people. <laughs> I'm doing it again, and I'm not trying to this week. <laughs> I really love the Crowded House on Private Universe. That one's a, that one gets me. Have you ever heard that one? It's quality tune. There's another... Crowd, don't Dream It's Over. I said that. Yeah, yeah. All right, fair enough then. Then there isn't another. <laughs> some some sort of Crowded House got played during the, the night at the wedding, but I don't know what or when, because I was pretty drunk. Yeah, I was And too. not always in the room when the music was being played. But, yeah, that's um, true of me no, as well. But, but the, the reason I always associate them mostly with New Zealand is because one of the things that got me listening to Crowded House... Hmm was the he did a gig in Auckland, a couple of gigs actually, called they called it Seven Worlds Collide. Right. And the reason I like picked up on it, I mean I I'd heard of Crowded House but I didn't really like know much about them. But um, it had a couple of people from Radiohead in it and it had Johnny Marr in it as well in oh, this I like see. seven man group. Right. Like, okay. They did like some songs and it was and they did release a DVD which I, I bought, which is like quality, basically. Yeah, there yeah you go. that sounds good. Seven Worlds, like a super seven group. Worlds Collide, check it oh, out. Like a super group, yeah. there you go. It could be an SLP recommend. Oh, it's come come too soon, but come to yes, there you go. Get get get, get, get on it anyway. Um, well, let's see let's see who else got in touch and I can upset some more people about Well that. Richard Wilkinson he said, Hey boys, a few things as I listen. Silver chair were dubbed Nirvana in pajamas. I like that. Um, and the Channel 9 production that we're talking about was Wide World of Sports, which is still going strong. Yeah, so m- maybe I got that and Trans World Sport a little bit mixed up, but basically mm. the two used to be shown, didn't they, on the side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, over here. Uh, Gavin at Ernie Oz, um, the uh, Bondi boy there, he mm-hmm. said, Hi boys, the best Aussie band ever, and then sent us a link to a band called Cold, Cold Chisel. Chisel. Yeah, they are, that's proper Aussie rock and roll. Sort of late 70s, early 80s rock, yes. basically. Yeah. Uh, he said, PS Silver Chair are from Newcastle, New, New South, South Wales. Indians. Oh, they are. There you go. Uh, Frogmore, he fell for it. He said, uh, uh, he, he fell for your um, little. The ACDC. I, yeah, don't, I yeah. didn't expect anybody would do. A couple that, of people did. That, like, there is such a difference between Savage Garden and ACD. But he said, the whole time you guys were thinking of the name yeah. Savage Garden, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, thinking probably wasn't the operative word, but we really did get lost, didn't we? Well, to be honest, are they memorable enough to remember? They're pretty shit, basically, yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, my, my missus, though, she listens to the start of the podcast every week cause to see what... What bullshit I've said, basically. <laughs> to see, see what I've got myself into. Before we get to like the rugby stuff, to see if you can incriminate yourself. Yeah, and uh, she she came in the house that the, on I think Tuesday or Wednesday, and d- the first thing she said to me was "Savage fucking garden." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's the only person that we uh, that we provoke that response. No, we've got a either. few more. Paul Ludo Lewis said, I, I, "I did nearly throw my phone across a car park until I realised that Tom was fishing with comparing ACDC to Savage Garden." Yeah. Uh, he said, "Also, in feedback, you need a disclaimer as playing." the new music whilst driving makes me drive like I'm in Mad Max Fury Road I love the new music I, I, I keep forgetting that we've yeah. got it and then I listen back you know it's there now oh, boys so it's you know. amazing yeah yeah that's it so you're driving that's it yeah okay. Tom Hodgson in capital letters tweeted Savage Garden I am shouting Savage Garden at my iPhone <laughs> okay well look we just forgot what's this I think it's something to do with the door yeah and then that was like the next tweet on like, that in the me, conversation yeah. I think it's something to do with the door I actually left out that that was us trying to I remember yeah. what they were called, I think. Well, you know, you got to walk through a door to get to the garden. Yeah. Maybe. So, so um, that that's sort of it on the uh, on the music. Any more contributions to our lack of understanding about the Aussie music scene are, are always welcome. Yeah. Obviously, got, no one's got, mentioned Kylie yet. I've got, <laughs> got, got nothing to add at the minute. Oh, she's basically British anyway. We'll take her. These days. Yeah, although to be fair, Peter Andre as well, though. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Peter Andre and Bubble Ranks. The sh- that was that was the rapper that when he did Mysterious Girl, the guy was called Bubble Aranks. 
Bubble Ranks. Bubble Ranks. Peter Andre featuring Bubble Ranks. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, we had a, a nice, a good tweet from our the Super League pods answer to. Um,